And welcome to In Game Chat for Saturday, August the 8th, 2020, uh, Season 14, Episode 24. I'm Scott. And I'm RJ. That's it. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228-272-9228. Uh, go to ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at Ingame Chat. You can find us on Facebook there as well. Do this very quickly. Um, yeah. Whatever. There we go. 612. I, I, sorry about the audio on the show last week. We couldn't hear that in our headphones. So we had some interference? Oh, did we ever, yes. Oh, good. Um, I took it out as much as I could mm. on the uh, what went up on iTunes and what went up on YouTube, but I was like, man, we can't hear it. And so, I mean, if it's coming through again like that, let us know. Um, but uh, I think we're I think we're good. I think I found the issue, but I'm not sure. What did you think it was? Well, I think it, oddly enough, uh, I think it's that light. <laughs> well, we did have that light come on in the middle of the of the uh, podcast last time. Well, that, that wouldn't be it, because this was right at the very beginning. Oh, okay. Like, this was at the beginning and went all the way through the show. And it was just this loud buzz tone thing. And I don't know what it was. But there's a short, I think, in that speaker. Or... There's a buzz that comes out of that speaker, and I was I was in here a minute ago. Mm-hmm. I say a minute ago, whatever. I've been in here for a little while, and um, I I noticed that there was no buzz in the room. I was like, oh, that's good, that's good, okay. And and then that thing turned off, and it was very silent in the room, mm-hmm. like it is now. And then I heard a little bit of the pop pop, buzz, 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 you know, and I was like, oh, there's that buzz again. I wonder what's causing that, you know? Mm-hmm. And I tried to think, and I noticed that your light was off. And so I went over there and I flipped the switches and I flipped one switch and nothing actually happened. I flipped the other switch and then these lights went off. And when I flipped it back on, all three came on. And so I just left the other switch off. Because hmm. maybe it was trying to connect or maybe it was do I, maybe there's, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Electronics, speakers, it's all strange stuff. So, but um, hopefully we don't have it again. Is there anybody in the chat room? Am I in the wrong chat no, okay, good. As long as everybody's in there. Just everybody's quiet. Crickets. Just just crickets. Um, yeah, you got that cricket noise in there? I, You know, I have no idea. He's got 90-some-odd pages. There is one for crickets. Good. But <laughs> it might take me a while to find it. Mm. Um, I mean, you can just do that and we'd be yeah. fine. We're good. Uh, don't ever, don't ever do that to me. Don't t- tell me that there's something that exists because now I have to find it, and, <laughs> and I won't be, I won't be satisfied until I find it. Your obsession strikes again. Ah oh, man. Yeah. Uh, later, Scott. Later. I know. I can't help it. Oh no, that says discreet. I thought it said cricket. Um. Oh, there is one in there. I don't know where it's at. There is one. All right, I'm going to not look at that. Um, Yeah, if you want to get in touch with us, yeah, this is in game chat. This is where we're at. Me, Twitter, in game chat, Facebook, in game chat, email, in game chat, everyone in game chat, all that stuff. We're streaming right now on Twitch. Go to twitch.tv. Um, and you can just search in game chat. You'll find us. Subscribe. Like if you do that, you make it make a stupid account and subscribe. Uh, this way, you'll get a notification whenever we go live, and then you just click a link, and it shoom, takes you right through there. Um. So yeah. Oh, I think I know who that is. Um. We had an email, by the way. Hmm. And I want to say maybe that's who that is. Is that is that Daniel? That's Daniel joined us. Ten minutes late. Uh, but. I think Daniel's there. He sent us an email saying that he's working on getting a Twitch account. He is watching now. Where is everyone? He is so used. Oh, the buzz is back now. Great. I don't hear it. I don't. Me neither. Yeah, see, I can't even hear it with my headphones off. Man. That's horrible. 
Yeah. So now I have no idea. So uh, it sounds absolutely quiet. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, Daniel Wright says, uh, anyway, while I do that, uh, uh, what I was going to say as far as Daniel is, is that he listens to past shows and goes through and, and you know, just slowly catches up to us. Mm-hmm. But uh, And so he's been listening when it's like, you know, a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. And now it's down to two. So, uh, yeah. anyway, while I do that, he said, ask RJ if he has ever 100%ed Bayonetta. I am thinking about starting that soon on PC. I haven't 100%ed Bayonetta. I need to get back into it, actually. That was one of those games I bought with, uh, along with Vanquish, that anniversary collection of, um, of uh, Platinum Games yeah. that they came out with. It. Mm-hmm. I haven't even started yet, but I didn't want 100% it. Um, I have it on my Switch. Yeah. And I only got that because the Steelbook was off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I just uh, got all the skills that I could um, for Bayonetta. Yeah. But in terms of the trophies and awards, I haven't uh, 100%ed that. There's something to go for there. You have a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. Bayonetta is... Yeah. Bayonetta 1 is installed on here mm-hmm. because it came with a download code. Yeah. And then Bayonetta 2 mm-hmm. cartridge is over there. Yeah. You know, I wish uh, I wish Matt would come back on the show, mm-hmm. so we could ask him how he's doing with whatever it is that he's playing. I know I let him borrow Mario Maker Two, not that I need that back, because mm-hmm. I am, you know, that far deep into Animal Crossing, mm-hmm. and you got resource management going on with that game. Right? Yeah, no, that's basically well, that's basically all that is. And I picked up a, um, <laughs> you know what? Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you've played? Uh, same as last week, I played uh, more of a PSO2. Uh, episode 4 has recently dropped, and they've given everybody the um, reset skills pass, which allows us to fix all the mistakes we've made in building our characters. See, I put some uh, skill points in areas that I wasn't really using, so we got a pass now so I can just re- redistribute all my points yeah. and rebuild my character from scratch um, uh, to fix all the mistakes I've made. So that's what I've been doing there, along with some resource management as well. Uh, but for the most part, again, I'm still playing Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I've liberated two islands, two parts of the islands now, islands now, and I'm working on the northern part of the map, um, clearing out side, side, uh, side quests and things of that nature before going to the main, uh, for the main objective. Um, I've maxed out everything, the abilities, uh, armor, Weapon capacity, all that type of stuff. I've um, I can't get any more uh, skilled than I am now with the character. So I know this. So the side quest missions aren't very important, but they're important to me for like clearing out the map because I've got like maybe two places I got to liberate before that place is completely um, yeah. cleared out before I get back to the main story. And I get the feeling that uh, after this, after it's all said and done, I'm going to have a lot of fun in the new game plus mode. Uh, finding all the things that I missed in the first playthrough because I've missed a lot. Of, I missed a lot of stuff like in terms of records and uh, artifacts and things of that nature. So going to going around the map, picking those things up as I go along. So um, yeah, I'm pretty much going to be playing that uh, the rest of this week and probably a little bit next week. Probably going to beat it this week um, after the show's over. But yeah, yeah I'm still going to be playing it after. You know, I'm hoping that's going to be the same with me with Last of Us Two here eventually. But uh, anything else you play? No, 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 no that's it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, you you play a new, a new game plus for uh, Last of Us Two. No, no. I mean, that's what you want to do afterwards, or no? no okay, no. <laughs> I'm not really a new game pluser type person. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, well, I will, well, I'll say that because Last of Us Two, Last of Us is like a because since it's completely story mm-hmm. based, and you don't, I didn't, upset. I didn't play it for anything else other than story. So after I've experienced the story, I didn't. Yeah, no, played again. no I didn't played do anything. Again. I didn't do it so, either. Not with La- I didn't go back through with Last of Us One either mm-hmm. and do uh, and do New Game Plus. Yeah, now something like uh, Dark Souls or Dead Space, something like that. I would New Game Plus that over and over and over again, mm-hmm. but not something for Last of Us because that's just pure. That's pure story. So I was wondering. That's why I was wondering if you were going to do it for uh, Last of Us Two. If you were going to do a New Game Plus or something like that. Uh, no, not gonna no. do New Game. Not gonna do. No desire to do New Game Plus. I think the last time I had a desire to do a New Game Plus was, I think, Spider-Man. Yeah. 
Because I think if I did a new game plus on Spider Man, you could get uh, there was like I, I'd be able to. That one had possibilities of platinum mm-hmm. uh, trophies on the um, or you know mm-hmm. doing the whole thing. You yeah, know, getting yeah. the getting a platinum on some, it. Some games do hook you like that, like uh, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Ghost of Tsushima or Spider Man in your case. Um, games that makes you want to platinum. You yeah. want to get all the. Eh, it's available. There. There's very it's very few times that the, that a game can offer me a platinum trophy where. I don't have to do some amazing feats in any kind of multiplayer thing that I don't want yeah, to do, a multiplayer thing, or yeah. play on, beat it on the insane difficulty or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Very few games offer you like to do that. This one just says if you put in the time, you'll get it. Yeah, you just got to put in the time. Yeah, there's like, a couple of other things that you have to do as well, but nothing mm-hmm. that was nothing that was out of the realm of possibility for me anyway. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm and I'm not a I'm not a hardcore kind of guy when it comes mm-hmm. to. You know, let's let's make it as stressful as possible to mm-hmm. to play. Yeah, see, that's what I'm trying to unlock in uh, in Tsushima right now is a uh, lethal mode. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know, me, yeah. I know, I know how you like your, I know how you like your games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that, I think that from what the description I've got was that uh, one hit and you're dead. I think, well, close enough to it. Yeah, yeah. So I want to open that up and see how well I can uh, how well I can uh, progress in that mode I know a lot of people are playing it in that mode now mm-hmm. actually but uh, I haven't got there yet because I'm still clearing out the fog and getting all these locations unlocked yeah. so try to figure out what I get from there um, cons- concili- conciliator I think anyway Daniel who's in the chat room <laughs> <laughs> just, it's so much easier to say that <laughs> Uh, he says, is it just you two nowadays? And I said, yeah, sometimes Matt shows up, like I was talking about Matt earlier. Um, I haven't talked to Nate in a while, um, but uh, I don't know if he's ready to come back or not. I know that he was playing it extremely safe, what with the coronavirus and everything, because he, he, has, he has a family member or two. I know, I know specifically one family member that he has that um, is, would be extremely um, underlying health conditions, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Very, very bad. Uh, were the were the virus to to get over there, and so he is taking every single precaution that he can, and I don't blame him for that. Again, that's the thing, uh, Daniel. Nobody nobody gets paid to do this. Um, I mean, I don't technically get paid to do this, but uh, nobody who was on the show outside of me got anything to do this. It was just a hey, let's drive into town on Saturday and talk about video games for two hours, mm-hmm. and. Um, James, I've talked to before, and he's, I think he's still in town, I think. He moved away for a while, uh, and then he came back. And so uh, I had talked to him about coming on the show, and I can't remember what it was we were going to talk about. Something. I can't remember. It was some recent game, but I don't remember what it no was. Event, no state of play or something like that? or that. No, nah, it wasn't or... anything like that. I don't remember what it was. Digital, nothing like that? No, or... no. Okay. I just I don't remember what it was. That, it, that that we were going to talk about, but uh, I was going to have him come back, and, and I'll throw I'll throw that out there again to him and see if he wants to show up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know who else because re- really it was just you, me, Matt, Nate, and James, mm-hmm. and then it was you, me, Matt, and Nate, mm-hmm. and then it was you, me, Matt, and now it's you and me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Sarah, yeah. Um, I will say that for a lot of this year. Um, Normally, I think we probably would have had Sarah in here a few times, mm-hmm. and I think Nate would have been in here a lot more because his job wasn't allowing him to come in for a while. Mm-hmm. And then his job got switched up to where it was like, "Ooh, I can now make it on Saturdays," and uh, and that's when things happened, yeah, uh, with the coronavirus stuff. And so he he couldn't make it. So, um, but yeah, so uh, Bob Titanfall. That's right. Yeah, because we got yeah. I remember that Bob Titanfall. Um, he see he's listening to older he's listening to older shows. So when he brings these things up, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We did call him that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm totally glad that you're here. I'm glad you got a Twitch account. I'm glad you're watching um, and can watch the show and be here live while we do it. We just answered one of your emails on the air, so that's a rare treat because <laughs> I would always forget to do that. Um, but there we go. We remembered to do it. What have I played? Absolutely nothing. Actually, I played. The tiniest bit of Destiny 2 on Sunday, and I mean the tiniest bit of that. I think I ran 
I ran a dungeon real quick with some with some guys and and got that done and turned in a f- couple of bounties and that was it. You know, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, good. You know, um, I am a hair's breadth away from hitting the season pass level rank of a hundred. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so and that's a, there's a triumph to get for that. So the thing, and so I haven't played any of it at all this week. Um, also Sunday, I played uh, some Last of Us as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and not very much, um, but got through, got through the, got, got through that part. Like, remember what I told you? I stopped midway mm-hmm. in, a, in a thing and I don't like doing that. I like stopping at yeah. chapter points basically. So you finished, so you finished the chapter? Yeah. I went ahead okay. and finished out the chapter. And so now I'm at the, now I'm at the next one. So I really, really, really hope to either finish that up. Um, this weekend, maybe tomorrow doing some play on it or tonight doing some play on it. I don't know, mm-hmm. but I really, really need to get off that off my, uh, my back, mm-hmm. uh, because it is, it's on my back. It's like, Hey, remember me? I'm over here. Don't forget. Yeah, but I'm going to go play. Well, okay, but I'll still be here waiting for you. Remember me? I'm here. Oh yeah. That's right. I haven't finished you yet. I need to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I know I'm going to get completely spoiled. I'm, I feel like feel like it's right around the corner waiting it's just mm-hmm. waiting for the right time to pop out and be like ha i've taken away your entertainment <laughs> you know about it without getting there or you i don't know who knows so how long ago was that game released june uh da, 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 da. well it was almost june 19th ago. june almost, 19th almost two months ago yeah yeah June nineteenth. i'm pretty sure it was june 19th. it was friday yeah okay yeah yeah so plenty of stuff out there for after two months yeah um. Yeah, there's another one that we got brand new. So mm-hmm. hey, welcome, new people. This is fantastic. I love it. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Um, state of play thing was such a waste. I don't know why Sony even bothered. I didn't watch it. Uh, it came on. What day was that? Thursday. Hmm. Mm. Was that Thursday or Wednesday? Mm. Usually stuff like this I expect on the weekend or something, but uh. No, State of Play was like this past. It was like this past week, and I want to say it was Thursday. Was it the sixth? Mm-hmm. Which is which would have been Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. See, it was yeah. Thursday. Yeah. What time Thursday? Like three o'clock in the afternoon for me, which is about the same time I get off. However, this Thursday was very different. Um, so yeah, I did not. Uh, yeah, I did not get a chance to to watch it. Uh, and I also, you know, I had heard ahead of time that they were not going to be doing any kind of, uh, you know. Um, hey, we're not going to really talk about the PlayStation 5. We're not going to really talk. In fact, some of the games that were showing off uh, wouldn't even be for the PlayStation 5. It was all PlayStation 4 stuff, from mm-hmm. what I understand. And so, you know, I, I've got a recap of it. Oh, yeah, it was Thursday, yeah. Yeah, it was at work anyway. So. Well, you know what? I, yeah, uh, Daniel's like, you just call me new. And I'm like, you know what I mean. You're new to Twitch. New Twitch people is great. You're new to Twitch. I didn't call you new. You've been listening for... God ever. Um, yeah, no, you're not new. Uh, so as far as that, it's been Animal Crossing mm-hmm. with a sprinkle of Last of Us and Destiny. Mm-hmm. And Animal Crossing has just been like, I log in, I tend to my island, I go around there and dig up the fossils and plant the money trees and pick up my shells, I sell the stuff, go back to my home, wait to do it again the next day. Mm-hmm. You know, or I'm selling my turnips, mm-hmm. which I did that again. And I may skip a week because I don't necessarily, I mean, I'm, I'm swimming in like 27 million bells. I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know, if I ever need an uptick, all I need to do is wait for a Sunday to come around, buy the turnips, sell them the next week. So mm-hmm. I know my pattern here. I know how to get around to doing that. So I, I don't think it's something that I need to really worry about. Um, it's amazing because I spent two million on turnips and with so you can only carry I think 40 items Mm -hmm. before you've got to offload them somewhere so you can carry more items Mm -hmm. and um, so I bought 2 million worth of turnips that's way more than 40 items Mm -hmm. it's massive and you don't buy them at one time Mm -hmm. You go and you can buy only as much as you can put on your person. Mm-hmm. And because the way money works in there, in the game, 
uh, you can only kind of hold. I'm trying to think of how to say this, like your wallet only holds a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Any excess fills up your inventory slots of money. Oh, yeah. So when I say yeah, so when I go and buy my turnips, it's like here I can only give her like three grand at a time mm-hmm. to get that much because of the inventory management that's involved. Yeah. So anyway, over a back and forth thing that I have to do with her, yeah. I spent two million on the turnips. I filled up my upstairs spot on the floor with turnips. I filled up, filled up my basement with nothing but turnips. And then I have three rooms, two of which I filled up with turnips. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I have four other rooms, two of which I filled up with turnips. Mm-hmm. Uh, one trip of selling off 40 of those things made my money back. Mm-hmm. One trip. 2.2 million bells, I think, in one trip. And I did five trips over the week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I did pretty good. Yeah. And again, it just takes nothing. It just That's all it takes. Yeah. Finding somebody that's got a you know a good amount of bells and stuff. Yeah. Following some other games lets you earn, uh, earn in-game currency that easily. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the other thing that I played, and I only played just the slightest bit of it, and you'll know exactly what it is when I fire it up here. Um, see if anybody can hear this. I think the speaker's on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. a bit. Yeah. We'll see. As the start. switch loads up. Yeah, it's loading. If I have to log in, I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> I bought this a couple of weeks but I bought this a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Um Knowing our look? Yeah. No, it's gonna be fine. Here you okay. Go. <clears throat> yeah. Do you know what that is? Do you have any idea what that is? You gotta know what that is. Is that Burnout Paradise? Of course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Of course it is. Okay. I have my burnout uh-huh. on my switch. Okay. Yeah, the speakers so aren't can, the speakers aren't the best, by the way. Okay, yeah. So now you can race all over the city and wreck people. Who Portable want to, right? burnout, man. Yeah, yeah. That's your game, though. Do you realize what this would do to me if they put Destiny on a switch? <laughs> oh, you never have. That's what you never cut off ever. Um. Yeah, no, it'd be bad. All right, shut up, Axel. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I just and and by played that I did like uh, I, I did a time trial event and a road rage okay. event and, the, and that's it. I played two. That, yeah, that's the one without the uh, without the. Uh, uh, Fast travel things you have to manually drive to each uh, starting location for your uh, races. N- yes, I mean, but every intersection is an activity. Okay, and there's tons of intersections, but yeah, mm-hmm. you do have to drive to them. The thing is, is that there's no. They really wanted this open world concept to kind of go through, and so there is no. What am I trying to say here? There's no. Um, you start at one spot. Yeah. The finish line is at another spot. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're first to get there. That's it. Yeah. You have the entire city open to you. It's not, you know, you're not on a path. Mm-hmm. It's just here's your starting point. There's your end point. Get to it. You figure out how. Hmm. Now, they do have a set path. They do have, well, they don't have a set path. Um, so you got shortcuts, possibly. The AI has a set path. Yeah. Yeah, the AI, like, if you just completely disregard and go off on your own, the AI is like, no, our goal is to get here as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, they will do it without taking shortcuts, by the way. Mm -hmm. They don't take... So if you know, like, if you know a jump or a path or something that is off the main road, they can get you to another part of the road quicker than take it. They they will never take it. Mm -hmm. Because I know that there's there's a path... And it's the um, <laughs> Rock Ridge, uh, the Blazing Saddles thing. Uh, but it's, I think it's called Rock Ridge. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, when you start up at the top, 
there's this windy road down a mountain, but mm-hmm. there's a jump you can take mm-hmm. that is a massive, it's one of their mega jumps. Not a super jump, but one of their mega jumps. So it's like a, it's like a San Francisco rush? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, yeah, there's a, um, there's a, um, a street, uh, the one in San Francisco, the one that goes winding down, the one that winds downhill. Mm, yeah, it's not necessarily yeah. like that one, but I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. It's the same method. Yeah. It's a jump. To avoid all that, you just jump it. Yeah, you just yeah. jump the whole thing. Yeah. And um, they won't do it, but you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's massive little, you know, shoop, jump, good, boom, whatever, done. Mm-hmm. But they won't take it. So, I mean. Yeah, and and there's there's little signals on the on the top of the screen there that'll start flashing when a um, intersection is coming up, saying, "Hey, you should probably take this road." Mm-hmm. And it's like you know that, but there is no, you know, there is no path or wall that you can hug to kind of make a turn or to t- tell you where to go. Mm. It's just you've got to get to that point. Um, I it, I have a love hate with that, you know, mm-hmm. um, but. So they tried something new, and it was just hit or miss. Yeah, and it just didn't work. They stood, man. They stood by it, though. They stood by it so hard. Mm -hmm. So hard. Uh, And I don't know if it's because EA told them to, or if it was a sense of never admit defeat. (laughs) (laughs) Or it was some sort of thing where it's like, no, this is what we wanted. This is how we designed it, you know? I've never really ever gotten a straight answer out of them or anybody else, and it's never really one. I know it's a sore subject, so I've never actually brought it up. Yeah. You know, we've had some people on the show from Criterion. I've gone out to Criterion um, mm-hmm. when they were doing the Need for Speed stuff. It's always been a sore subject, and I've always left it alone. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've because you know, mainly because it's all it's in the past. It's done. Yeah. You know, and and seriously, Criterion, how did they even exist anymore? Mostly, it's the the team is so fractured now, yeah. and in what they're doing. So, I don't know. It's it just it's just not a thing anymore to worry about. Um, I do miss. I, w- I would rather I, looking back on it, and I've said it before that I would not. I I stood my ground with them as well, uh, mm-hmm. that, and that was just that's fanboy bias, really. Mm-hmm. I was completely like on their side of they can do no wrong, um, but I think they did with that. It didn't hurt their sales, and it didn't hurt people having a, a nostalgic look at the game and, and saying that that was um, one of the finer moments in Arcade Racers, mm-hmm. was Burnout Paradise. And a lot goes to that with um, the massive open-worldness of it, the eight-player populate-the-city thing that you could do. Mm-hmm. Which was always fun. You could do a race with eight players, and it, and because there was no, because nothing was blocked off for you to do, it was a lot of fun because mm-hmm. you could make your own rules. Like, okay, we're gonna do this race, but everybody has to go, you know, a certain direction or a certain way it has to be done or something. You make your own rules mm-hmm. how you wanted to do that, and then there was other little fun activities that you could do with with people online and that sort of thing. And then there was the the street trials and all I just there was a lot that was integrated into this thing and then it was the year long DLC mm-hmm. that they offered and I want to say all of it was free um especially that big surf island thing that they added way late in the in the almost a year after it was out yeah they added almost a brand new section of the city mm-hmm. it was like here you go and it was totally free you didn't have to pay anything for it mm. um so yeah, a lot of people look back on that, and I, and you look back on it now because you have nothing like it anymore. Yeah. Um, their attempts to do Need for Speed didn't. I mean, those were good, but it's Need for Speed, and it didn't have the, just didn't have the feel. Yeah, that a that a Burnout game had. Yeah. Like I think I've saw, I think I thought about it in the past, but uh, the last racer who uh, really got me um, had me interested was uh, Split Second. That was PS3. I believe. Yeah, you know, split second. Yeah, San Francisco Rush was my. Uh, Daniel says that was your stranded on an island and only one pick and only pick one game. Uh, San Francisco Rush. It was, um, and it was a long time ago because I can remember being in the arcade and uh, playing. I had so much fun. It was San Francisco Rush twenty twenty forty nine forty nine. Yeah, yeah. Did with the hit? with the Alcatraz add on, I yeah. guess. Did you get hit by the train? I don't remember. I really don't. Okay, but. That was also a time when 
malls were a thing, arcades were a thing. Yeah. I see what arcades in the mall are now. And yeah, it's I know. Like depressing. That's that's when that was around, and now it's and now it's not. So yeah. obviously, Burnout Paradise probably would be my stranded on an island game. Mm-hmm. I own it now on it's too many systems. <laughs> I got it on P. I got it on PS. Uh, the remaster? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, GameStop had one of them uh, buy to get one things, and I was like looking for something, the free part, and it was like, okay, I'll just take the uh, Burnout. This was great because it was. Um, this game hadn't been out very long, maybe a month or so, mm-hmm. and Best Buy had it marked down. It was it's regularly like fifty bucks, mm-hmm. fifty or I think it's fifty, mm-hmm. and they knocked it down to thirty. Yeah, and I was like, ooh, uh, and then I remembered I'm Gamers Club Unlocked guy, right? And I'm right. like, ooh, I can get a percentage off twenty three dollars, mm-hmm. twenty three bucks for the game. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, eh, nice. Nice mm-hmm. to have it. Uh, we're way behind on, the, on a break here, so we're going to take a break. Oh, I downloaded this, but I have not played it. Actually, I put it in my cart from the website, but I haven't actually installed it on my system. It's free to play if you're a PlayStation Plus member. Um, but it is taken over. <laughs> it has become, um, I say it's taken over. I don't know. Had a huge amount of a buildup. I don't know if that buildup is still going. I think it kind of is. Mm-hmm. But it's Fall Guys. Okay. Um, it is a, I don't know how many player... Triple digit thousands or something, wasn't it? I, well, I don't know. I don't think it's that many people. I think it's like 100. Well, triple digit. Yeah. I think, I, or maybe 65? I don't know. How many people can play in one game of Fall Guys. It's either 65 or 100. Um, anyway, it, it's one of those. But it's that many that many of these little guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they go from one end of the course to the other end of the course. And after each round, a certain amount of people are eliminated, and it just keeps going until there's down to one. So, yeah. I just looked this up, then. It's no, there's no shooting. Think of, think of, did you ever watch that show on, on TV called Wipeout? Yeah. Yeah, where it's like all these courses and stuff like that. Well, imagine if instead of one person going through the course at a time, mm-hmm. it was 100 people trying to go through it at one time. It sounds like Choo Choo Rocket or something. It's more of like a massive... What was it? Was it MXT? On uh, You know, the, the it, was, it was a Japanese game show that was on like... Uh, Spike TV a long time ago. <laughs> no, I never, never saw Spike was M- TV. Was but... it MXT? Oh, come on. you got to remember it. They were all going through a collision course. Mm. I can't remember. No, no, we'll anyway. figure this out later. Um, yeah, we will. This. I'm going to have to look this, up, look this up then. Yeah, look it up. It's free, PS Plus. That's, mm-hmm. You've got it. And I put it on my cart and attached it to my account. I just haven't downloaded it to do anything with it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's uh, the main theme of the game. It's called Everybody Falls. We'll be back with more in game chat right after this. I'm so far behind. Welcome back to In Game Chat here on this Saturday, the 8th of August. Yeah, this sounds a little uh, more ominous than the track we left on. Yeah, yeah. This is Barbie Horse Adventure. <laughs> There's a twist at the end, <laughs> and it goes real dark. <laughs> Barbie 
as you've never seen it before. Uh huh. Yeah. It's kind of like those uh, those actors you see always typecast in a certain role, then suddenly they play something that just jars you. Yeah, and it's hard to get over. The, yeah, it's, it's like, hard uh, to like hard for you to kind of. It's like a, put yourself in that. Give an example, like a Robin Williams, one hour photo. One hour photo. Yeah, yeah no. that one. You ever see him in Insomnia? Yeah, yeah, yeah Insomnia, same that one thing. Too, uh, the Sixth Day. That one I don't know about. Or I may know. About. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is from a game called Hell Point. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, let's go to the phone. Talk to Chris. Hey, Chris. What's going on? Hello. Hey, what's going on with you? Not much, but yeah. When you were talking about the Emmett thing earlier, I said, "Yeah, I remember that. I love that one to death." You know, they had some funny comments that they dubbed over the, the original Japanese uh, voiceover. They did. I remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Oh God, I watched that so much. It was so hilarious. Yeah, especially I, I with a guy it. named Baba Ganoush. Yeah, <laughs> Baba Ganoush. That's all I remember. Baba Ganoush. But yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, if you if you're not if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you should look up what is it, MXT? Is that what you said? I think it was called MXC, but in Japan, MXC and, or MXT? I think it was MXC, but I believe the the, the name of the show in Japan the was in was called uh, Takashi's Castle or Somebody's Castle, and I think it was probably during okay. the '80s or something. But basically, all the different shows that are similar to that, you know, all follow that formula after it came out. Or yeah, it's after. MXC because it was called what most extreme challenge is what it, yeah okay. okay it was mxc okay takeshi's castle in 1986 yeah okay yeah but they but they picked it back up in 2003 they took those old episodes mm-hmm. and in 2003 they overdubbed them and they aired it on i don't know it, okay. it was a I think bunch it was of different TV. Yeah. i think it was you're dozens right. of contestants throw, throw themselves into a variety of daunting challenges as they attempt to storm takeshi's castle and win the grand prize of a million yen that was so good yeah, so it, that one was hilarious. Mm. Goodness. Oh, man. Anyway, so what else is going on with you? Well, I forgot about last week. I have got a, a couple of new other Switch games. I got a uh, uh, fairy tale is based on a, uh, a Japanese uh, anime series that uh, goes through the storyline of that. You know, I want to start. I want to play it on vacation and stuff coming up here, but. I also got the digital download of uh, Carrion on Switch. As well. Oh yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, that that was really fun. I love that one. Good. And I've been catching up and more exploring, like usual, on uh, the Ghost of Tsushima and all that. I've been having fun with that as well. Mm-hmm. And I got the the grappling hook, and I'm on the mission that came directly after it to rescue the, his buddy's uh, friends that were captured. So I'm mm-hmm. about to finish that little section up and rescue them. I just mm-hmm. love going around on the rooftops and everything and drawing them here and there and then sniping them in the head with the arrows and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I remember the uh, sniping part with the um, at the beginning, and then it gets a little harder to do because um, some, guys wear, some guys wear helmets, mm-hmm. so you can't use your half bow that you've got all nice and leveled up to almost perfection, and then some dude comes in with a helmet and just throws out the water. Can't, can't snipe him like you want to. Yeah, so but when you, you get the long, when you get the long bow, you know the heavy arrows will go through the helmet. Yeah, yeah. So that's something to anybody out there listening that playing it or will want to play it. Yeah, the long bow with uh, the heavy arrows will go through helmet. Yeah, problem is though you can't crouch shooting it. You got to be standing. Mm-hmm. So it's a long bow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Yeah, but those Japanese long bows, those suckers are long. They are yeah, manga. Yeah, the range is uh, ridiculous on that. I mean, normally when you have an arrow, you know, you get you allow for the distance and it drops a bit. Mm-hmm. The arrow drops a bit. Longbow, not so much. Mm. <laughs> you just point and click. You don't even have to aim right. Just make sure the uh, targeting reticle is where you want to hit it. It'll hit it. Yeah. Well, Chris, thanks for calling in, buddy. Good, hear- good hearing from you again. All right. Y'all have a good afternoon. Take care. Take care now. All right. Bye. Bye. That mention of Bose wanted me to bring up, or maybe want to bring up the, uh, in fact, we've got music from the game uh, only for the fact that it got a PC release this mm-hmm. past week, and it's Horizon Zero Dawn on okay. PC. Not getting the best, I'm getting a lot of, I, I'm reading a lot of comments that it does look better, but, but it does not play better. Are we getting the uh, Batman uh, mess? No, 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 no. We're not getting a Batman mess. We're getting, we're getting. Which one was that? Arkham. That was Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight, yeah. yeah. The PC on Arkham Knight yeah. was a 
Well, the re- the reason that you're not okay. So the reason that's different is I think the PC version came out what a week later. Was it a week later or was it a month later? For Arkham Knight, I'm yeah, not, I'm not not too sure actually. Or did they later. come out close enough? Regardless, um, regardless, the the PC version of Horizon is not getting the best of reviews as far as the playability. Um, um, let's see, June twenty third, twenty fifteen. Huh. Was that all systems or just that was the initial release date for June? Said for PS4, Xbox One, and Windows on June twenty third, twenty fifteen. Okay, well that's that's huh. fine. Then. Okay, that's fine. There may have been a point at which it was delayed, and then they backed it up. Uh, there was mm-hmm. a lot of problems with that game. It was supposed to be out in like October. Yeah, because it was set during Halloween. Yeah, the game was originally scheduled to be October twenty October fourteenth. Yeah, but yeah, uh, the year before. 2014, yeah. Yeah. and it didn't make it. 2014, yeah. But uh, yeah, anyway, there's some problems there. It sounded like it sounded like they didn't test the game, or that there's just yeah, there's there's some patching that needs to be done badly to get this thing to optimize and to work and to be uh, to be something that is that is playable. Just yeah. I heard too many complaints about glitches galore. Yeah, just not running, just not running well. Okay, just running not well. running well on PCs. Looks good when it does. And when you, if you can get it to run, it looks great. But then, of course, there's also the, the playability of it is not very great. Mm-hmm. So I've got a lot of problems with it from what I understand. Um, which, again, that brings me to whatever it was that you just mentioned that I've, that I've completely uh, forgotten about. We were talking about Batman. Mm-hmm. Rocksteady okay. revealed their new game, which is Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say they revealed it. They just revealed a poster. And basically, I think we're going to get more. We're going to know more about it come the uh, the DC fandom thing that's going on August twenty second. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll post this out there into the chat room so people can see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is. It's a game. Uh, I, I I'm not. I don't know what it's based on, but it's Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Holy crap! That URL is huge. Um. <laughs> August 22nd, I guess we'll know more. From what I understand, this thing is nowhere near ready to be playable. Right. And so, while this is a nice little tease, don't expect to play it until probably next year. Mm-hmm. Um, late next year. Or at least get more info next year. <laughs> it's just it's just Because all, not... all we got is a poster, yeah. so yeah. Um, so, yeah. And there's a picture of Superman. Mm-hmm. The back of the back of Superman. Somebody zoomed in real close on his face, mm-hmm. and it looked like he is something's going on with his face. Like there's a little red around his eyes and stuff. And I know you're thinking heat vision and blah blah blah. I don't know. I think the only way that they can do what they're doing is that um, you play as the villains because the, apparently the heroes are. Under possession of some sort, some sort, and mm-hmm. and doing doing bad things, who knows? Uh, but we've been waiting for what five years now? Twenty fifteen, you said, is when Arkham Knight released, mm-hmm. and we've heard nothing about it for five years until yeah. now. So, and we're not going to hear anything about it until. I mean, we'll hear something about it later this month, but we're not going to play anything probably until next year, or the year after. Mm-hmm. So, that is definitely going to be a game that is going to be played. That's interesting because, yeah, I guess they're going to have to. I mean, how do they start building that game when we got new consoles coming out? Hmm. I don't know how they're going to play I mean, it off then. I don't know. Because wouldn't they have been? They, surely they had been working on this with the new consoles in mind. They had to have known that, look, we're not going to get this thing out before new consoles release, so let's mm-hmm. build for those. Mm-hmm. So that had to have been the case. Anyway. Um, oh, you know what? I haven't done a chat room roll call here. And my chat room hasn't updated to show me who's all in there. There we go. Uh, except it doesn't have the new person that just came in there. Uh, AC Wraith, another TV viewer, a 10. Casket Sharp. Mm-hmm. 
Commander Root. Is your favorite. Casket Sharp is my favorite. Cons- I, Daniel, you got to give me a you got to you got to give me a pronunciation test on how to say your name. Conciliator, conciliator. I don't know. Lethal Migraine. Uh, need him and Stephen Van Dam, and then somebody else that was in there from Argentina, and I don't know who it is. Right. Um, Lethal Migraine says it's a bigger bigger issue than the uh, than the console problem. It's what happens when WB Games gets sold. Um, who was it? EA, I oh, think. That's right. Yeah. EA, had EA said showed that, interest in yeah their showed stuff. interest in yeah, buying it. That's right. Don't but don't sell to EA. Don't please don't please don't. Uh, then again, I don't know where you go. Don't sell to Ubisoft either. Sell to Microsoft. You know. Mm. Sell to. Uh, I don't, well, no, don't sell to Microsoft. It needs to be playable. Try, try it needs to find, trying to find someone who's got their stuff together. Right now, it's like sell to Devolver. <laughs> <laughs> sell to Devolver. Sell to Tiny Build. Sell to they have, these companies have no money, yeah, migraine, or, or at least not enough. Migraine says uh, Tencent will buy WB. Yeah, probably. He's actually probably right. Yeah. He's more than likely completely correct. Is that regardless of what EA, it doesn't matter how much interest EA shows, Tencent will be like, we'll buy it for a billion. <laughs> a what? I, I'm just saying, Tencent yeah. has more money yeah. than you could ever imagine. And so, regardless of what EA does, mm. Tencent can just say, look, we'll just put it at something that you cannot compete with and we'll buy it. Mm-hmm. You know, if they want it that bad. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I know they're, they're looking to sell. Um, Consigliere, yeah. Consolator. We'll just call it that, I guess. So, anyway, we're coming up on a break here. Uh, when we come back, we will talk about the state of play. There's not much to talk about other than some of the stuff that they showed off. What else do we have? Um, the controller issue on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Uh, the Marvel Avengers beta is going on. I don't know if anybody's played in that. I haven't. And for whatever reason, I have no intention to. That game just does not does not appeal to me. The game does not... Looking at it, I'm like, I don't really want to do any of that. This does not look fun. Um, Was it something like DC Online or anything like that? or, mm, or Sort of. You, no, like, not really. Been, or is uh, City of Heroes really gave you that? Thing no, that it's not, it's not an MMO. Okay. It's not an MMO. All right. It's totally a. It's totally a. It's a game, mm-hmm. but um, but not an MMO style type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I can't really I can't really describe how it is, but it's basically you can play as all the characters in the Avengers and stuff, and okay. you can team up and play as the other characters in the Avengers. But um, I don't know for whatever reason it's just not clicking with me. Yeah, just it's not something that's like to catch your interest. Yeah, not pulling me in. It should, but it doesn't. Just I would think so, you know, superior yeah. game, let's do it. But no, it's not there. Uh, let's see, Take-Two CEO, we've got that. Um, yeah, Fall Guys stuff, there's that. New Call of Duty, Street Fighter Five. We've had some information coming in from there this past yeah, week. We saw the, uh, I'll let you take that over. Um, <laughs> Nintendo had a fantastic, uh, their profits were huge in ever how long. And yeah, so all of that coming up. Here on In Game Chat. Music here from a game called Scrutinized. It is the title music for that game. We'll be back with more In Game Chat right after this.
Welcome back to In-Game Chats. Music here from a game called Banners of Ruin. Somebody played it. Somebody bought it. It was in somebody's activity feed on my Steam page. So, that's how I got it. Alright, so what do we have in the news? Halo Master Chief Collection is getting cross-play in 2020. That's nice. PC and, I, you know, the more cross-play the better. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, hoping that, you know, it'll bring about the, uh, the Destiny cross-play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to be doing Destiny, you know, by the time that happens. Who knows? It depends on the content they bring out. I mean, it does, but you know, I got a. Um, you, got the, you got some new stuff coming out later on, don't you? November. Yeah. <laughs> Supposed to be September. Got pushed back to November. Mm -hmm. I also have other games coming out in November mm -hmm. that I really, really, really want to play. Um, so we'll see. I have not pre ordered the new Destiny stuff yet. Mm -hmm. um, they sent me a poll. Hmm. Bungie did. Okay. I'm not supposed to talk about the contents of the poll, but I completed it, and they're going to give me like 500 silver or something for finishing it, for completing the thing. So Wow. It's in-game currency. Again, wow. Well, I mean, I say in-game currency. Well, what, what, do you, what, what else? What, what would you rather them do? Not? Say thank you. Well, they did say thank you when I completed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says thanks for completing the poll. Mm -hmm. Be on the lookout for your, for your redemption code for the 500 silver. So, I mean, they said thank you. So that's enough for you? Mm -hmm. Just a thank you? It's like, a, it's like giving a quarter <laughs> tip. What are you going to get for 500 silver? Um, oh, I don't know. Jack Not, Diddley. Well, it, it adds to the silver that I already have that I've never spent that they have given me. All the silver that I have mm -hmm. is stuff they've given me. By the way, for those who don't know, um, sil so there's a, there's a currency in the game called Bright Dust. That's currency you earn in-game. Mm -hmm. Then there's silver. Yeah. That's currency you buy with real money. So five bucks, you get ever how much silver, I don't know. And then you can buy items in-game. They're all cosmetic items. There is nothing that is, uh, that is pay to win in that, sort of, in, the, in that regard. It's all cosmetic. You, know, you get a new skin for your gun. You get a new, I don't know, new uh, armor set, armor ornaments or something. Ornaments. Um Finishers. Gestures. Fin yeah. I mean, yeah. Gestures, finishers, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Emotes and things like that. Yeah. That's fine. And you can pay real world money for those. <clears throat> um, currently, I have 1,500 silver on my character or on my account. Mm -hmm. Because when they first initiated the silver, they gave everybody 1,000. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 1,000. They may have given everybody 800 and then I earned 200 for some doing something else. And then I earned 500 whenever... They did a shift or a switch or something. I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember. I actually did have to buy it. Um, when Bungie was moving from Blizzard to Steam, mm -hmm. uh, any um, I had money left on the my Blizzard account. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I had, I don't know, I had something like three bucks. And so I put enough in to get it to enough to where I could buy some silver just to clean the account. Mm, okay. Because I was not going to be, yeah. I, I had money over there because I had to, I, I spent, um, I bought a gift card from like Best Buy to get a to bungee bucks, not bungee bucks, whatever, whatever it is for Blizzard bucks, you know, yeah. to get Blizzard bucks. And I redeemed it. And the cost of what I wanted was, it's, it never works out to, you know be the cost of whatever you buy in a store or something like mm -hmm. that. It's always going to leave you with extra so that you'll spend again. Um, or it's going to leave you with not enough so that you have to buy two of those redemption cards. Yeah. So that, again, you'll still be left over. Mm -hmm. And it's enough for you to spend some more money so you can buy something else. It's just cycle. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing that because I know that I bought... Uh, I didn't buy the game through Bungie Store, but I know I bought like Shadowkeep or one of the... One of the, you know, one of the new one of the new um, expansions. 
through through the uh, Blizzard store. So anyway, had some change delivered, but now I'll, I'll have like two thousand silver. So whatever, it doesn't matter. Filled out a thing. I've, I've spent way too much time talking about it. Uh, PS4 controllers will not work with PS5 games. Uh, although Microsoft said all of our Xbox One controllers will work on Series X. <laughs> it's really weird how it's kind of reversed here. Yeah. Because I remember the, when the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 were coming out and Microsoft was like, yeah, you can't share your games. And Sony was like, well, you can share any game you want. Here's how it mm-hmm. works. And it's like, I'm going to give you my game. You're going to go play it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and now it's doing uh, the difference there is that uh, PS, PS4 controllers won't work with PS5 games. Mm-hmm. That's... Like I know they're doing, I know they're kind of revamping the controller a little bit, yeah. but not not enough that I would think it would I might matter have, too much. I might, I might want to check in this to be sure, but uh, I think the um, fight sticks that were made for the PS4, they still might work for the PS5. I'm not sure. I have to look into that, but I think there was a report out that said that they they would, or something along those lines, hmm. because I know fight sticks were made for the PS5. That yeah. I know of, or anybody well, not plans yet. to, not yet. But it's going to be if it is, it's going to be a minute before they before they come out. But I have to double check on that. But I think the sticks made for the PS4 might uh, work on the PS5. If not, I'm pretty sure some some adapter or something will come out later on that'll let people do so. Uh, Spider Man's going to be an exclusive PS4 character for Marvel's Avengers. Mm-hmm. Um. Apparently, have more PlayStation exclusives beyond Spider-Man for that or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> uh, Don Matrick, God. Uh, I think he does he still work with? Um, is it Zynga or something? Mm-hmm. Don Matrick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was he was with Xbox for the longest time. Yeah. <clears throat> signed out. How did I get signed out? <sighs> because of Google. Yeah, right. Because Google. Thanks, Google. I have to open this thing back up so I can see my notes. Because it signed me out. So excuse me. I'm sorry. Fall Guys hit 120,000 concurrent players. 56,000 on Steam just alone. That's a lot for a game that just kind of happened. Yeah. Just like here. And and that's usually how some, that's usually how a lot of these things happen is like, there's no build up. There's no, um, suddenly numbers. Yeah. It's just boom. Here's a game and everybody is on board. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm anxious, I'm anxious to kind of play it. it looks looks kind of fun. Yeah, it's free. Why not? And it's free. That's the best part. It's mm-hmm. totally free. Um, let's see. Uh, BlizzCon is going digital. That'll happen sometime next year, early in next uh, early next year. Street Fighter Five, getting some new characters. Yeah, new season was announced. I say new characters. They're actually old though. Yeah, they're new for like, Street yeah. Fighter Five. New, uh, yeah, new in Street Fighter Five, but yeah, they're uh, classic Capcom uh, characters. What are they? Uh, Dan, we're getting uh, we're getting Dan first. Uh, we're getting Dan. Uh, we're getting Oro, Rose, uh, and Akira from uh, Rival Schools. And I think one more is coming after her, but this is going to be all down the line because Dan, I don't think is going to be coming out till winter of uh, this year. Uh, so it's going to be a minute before he's released. So it's going to be uh, be some time for that comes out. Yeah, I think a lot of folks were uh, talking about how when season four was announced and then G and Sagat were announced, they were like both released uh, like the day after they were announced, right? So, yeah. so a lot of folks, you know, you could probably say COVID or something like that, but then others would say, you know, it didn't affect all the other companies. So go figure. But either way, yeah, it depends. Gonna, yeah, they don't yeah. all work the same way. Yeah. So uh, either way, uh, we're going to wait. We're going to be it's going to be winter before we get um, before we get uh, the first character of uh, season five out. So yeah, but out of all those, uh, Dan is the one I'm interested in the most because um, you know, it's a pretty pretty fun character. You know, the casual thing like that. I know he's got his uh, drawbacks, consi- a lot of drawbacks actually, but it's just fun to play with it. Or if you just want to troll folks online with him. Hmm. 
the thing about Akira is that uh, Rival Schools hasn't been um, Capcom hasn't really done anything with any of the characters from Rival Schools for a very long time so it was a really big surprise when uh, when she was announced this last time I played Rival Schools was uh, on Dreamcast I got a feeling this is something that would have been announced at Evo mm-hmm. if it were still going on yeah because would that be, have been this weekend or last week when was that it would have been would have been uh, this month so yeah. yeah we talked about that when we were leaving the station last week yeah exactly. about the fact that you know mm-hmm. no Evo to look forward to mm-hmm. so the whole bunch of, there's going to be a whole, probably going to be a whole bunch of speculation on who that uh, fifth character is going to be but we'll have to wait a while and see yeah I'm not a big fighting game guy so yeah you like watching it I, but really I like watching it but really I only like watching it when it's the the you know the elite yeah. Who are, you know, the tournament type stuff yeah. going on with Evo. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I gave you those tournaments to look at uh, if you ever get a, if you ever get a, a, hank- a hankering to uh, watch stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know, NLBC, Wednesday Night Fights, things of that nature. You know, you'll see some uh, elite level players I'll check that fighting out. in that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I just liked it on Evo just for the fact that it was, you know, for whatever reason, it was easy to follow of to, here's, yeah, the big stage, right? Here's the lineup of who's playing or where it's or what game's being played. Mm-hmm. And it was fun to watch some of the Mortal Kombat stuff or some of the... the, the uh, Mortal Kombat, Smash. What's the superhero one? Injustice. Injustice. Mm-hmm. You know, the Injustice and uh, anything NetherRealm was always fun to watch. Yeah. But then you get something like Street Fighter, Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, I never really took to the uh, Blaze Blue. Blaze Blue. Yeah, Guilty never really Gear. took to those. Or Guilty Gear, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was only only really took to the ones that I was familiar with, and those mm-hmm. were not fighting games I was ever familiar with. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so, so yeah. when Strive comes out, I know I'll be playing that. Guilty Gear, Strive. Oh, the new see? One comes out, see? Didn't even know. <laughs> Didn't even know. Yeah, I'll be getting into that one when it comes out. Didn't know. Uh, let's see. Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, had sales that, uh, well, it beat out Smash Ultimate. In fact, their top ten list. Yeah, they were updated and they, like, took the top. Yeah. Is this their top ten? It is, yes. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe still wins out. But at number oh. two is Animal Crossing. I thought Animal Crossing took the top spot? I thought it did too, but it did beat Smash Brothers. Okay. Uh, then Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Then Pokemon Sword and Shield. Mario Odyssey. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Eevee. That sort of thing. Super Mario Party. Splatoon 2 is still in there. And Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. You got numbers on that list? I do, yeah. Uh, how close was it between uh, Mario Kart uh, 8 and uh, Animal Crossing? Oh, about 4 million. Mm. Um, Animal Crossing was 22.4 million Mm -hmm. Mario Kart was 26.7 26.75 actually Uh, Smash Brothers only at about 20 so Mm. the distance between Animal Crossing and Smash Brothers not too big of a gap um, on those so Let's see. During the three-month period from April to June, Nintendo, Nintendo's operating profits increased by 427%. Goodness. Yes. Mm. In its latest financial earnings statement, Nintendo revealed its year-on-year sales increased by 108%, while the company's net profit is up 541%. This is why... And that's the reason you can't find Switches in stores, man. Mm-hmm. It, and it's weird because there was a time you could, but then when this, it only seems to have come up when the whole pandemic started. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that they couldn't get them made fast enough, but whatever, the demand just skyrocketed. Yeah. And I don't know why that relates to the pandemic. I don't know why it thought, well, we're going to be home. We might as well buy a switch. Why? I mean, it's the cheaper of the three consoles. I get it. Yeah. That's true. So maybe that's maybe that's a case. Maybe there's a sense there that it's maybe I should stop thinking in parents buying things for their kids' terms. Maybe I don't know, mm-hmm. but that's how I would always relate to how something is going to do well is based on parents buying it for their children. Mm-hmm. 
Um, maybe we've passed that line a little bit to where it's like, no, no, no. They buy their own stuff now. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Out of that, dedicated video game platform sales, which include hardware, software, and accessories, are up 113%. Hardware sales spiked 166%. 5.68 million units compared to 2 million units at this time last year. Software sales went 50 million units compared to 22 million last year. Digital sales were up 229%. Mm -hmm. um. Oh, by the way, that was Life to Date, those rankings I was giving you a minute ago yeah. of the games. That was yeah. from their release to now, mm -hmm. which is why Mario Kart 8 is right Still there at the there. top. Okay. But the fact that New Horizons is at number two, mm -hmm. you know, beating out all those others, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Animal Crossing New Horizons moved 10 million units during the April-June period. Wow. It's amazing. I was, I was a part of that. <laughs> I was a part of that. Still are. I know. I'm still there. You still playing do, it. You still, you still buying turnips. Yeah, I'm still doing my turnip stuff. I can now do some, like, I can now do terraforming. Did I tell you that? I can yeah, now, you can do terraforming. Yeah, stuff, yeah, and I really, I really haven't, like... I saw how it's done, and like you've got to, like you really got to put in a commitment of time if you want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you really want to make your paths and do all this, and from what I'm seeing here, it amazes me when I go to somebody else's island and I see what they've done to it. I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. that is some kind of commitment. Yeah. And I kind of want to be that committed, but we'll see. Hmm. I would think you had some good uh, experience with it when, with you playing uh, City Skylines and stuff like that. City Sky, it's different though. Like if I want if I want to build a road in City Skylines, I plop, you know, I click my mouse on one end, I drag it across however far I want the road to be, and I let go, and it makes street boom right mm -hmm. there. If I want to do that same thing in Animal Crossing, I got to take my guy and walk him to the point that I want, press a press a button, and he bends over and makes a path. Mm -hmm. And then I got to walk away a little bit, bend over and make more of that path and stretch that out and do that all the way. Oh, it's tedious. Mm-hmm. Like I said, commitment. Goodness. It's tedious. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe there's some things that I haven't discovered that make it easier. I don't know. But tedium is part of it. So. Wow. Um, coming up on a break here. So I'll hold off on doing the state of play thing for PlayStation. I was just going to go down some of the list of things that they had. Mm -hmm. um, Nothing that stood out to you in your, uh, oh, in your own, right? I, mm, I'll look at... Well, there was one thing that stood okay, out, but it's not, a, it's not a... Nothing to be like, oh, here's the big one of the week, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was pretty big. Somebody notified me about this on Sunday. Um, I think it was Sunday or overnight Monday or something. They pointed me to a link to this, and I was like, ooh, this is interesting. Blizzard employees um, started sharing their salaries and pay increases in an attempt to contextualize growing dissatisfaction with disparity in wages at the company. They started revealing how much they were making. Mm. Uh, according to a report from Bloomberg, Blizzard's employees have created a document to which anyone can add their salary level and any recent change in pay. The document exists due to what employees see as the lackluster response to an internal survey conducted by Blizzard in 2019, which allegedly revealed that a significant group of the company's staff were unhappy with their salary. Blizzard's subsequent plan to ensure fairer pay was put in place last month, but it led to an outcry of the company's internal Slack mess uh, on the inter on the company's internal Slack messaging boards. Uh, our goal has always been to ensure we compensate our employees fairly and competitively. That's their statement. We're reviewing this. Bloomberg's report includes details from numerous sources, including the pay document itself. 
some messages on the Slack board and other internal communications. The report alleges the, that layoffs in February of last year mm-hmm. left remaining staff with additional responsibilities, but they were not compensated with additional pay. Get more for less, man. Well, yeah, that's usually that's that's usually how it goes. That's usually business. how it goes. That's why layoffs happen. They have to lay you off so that they can, you know, save the money. The you know they got to they're losing money there. They have to save that money. Mm-hmm. Laying off people and spreading the workload around, and I have no idea how it works there, uh, is usually what comes of that. Mm-hmm. You don't get extra pay no. because they laid those people off. <laughs> um, that's, but then again, I don't know how extreme that was. I don't know how, I don't know anything about Blizzard, really, mm-hmm. as far as their, how they work and everything else. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. This co- By the way, this comes from an article from GameIndustry.biz. Uh, let's see Blizzard has been the subject of criticism for its enrichment of Bobby Kotick among other executives <laughs> in response the company pointed out that Kotick's 30 years as CEO its share value has increased from 10 million to more than 50 billion mm-hmm. however when we spoke to them the organization leading the call for change it suggested that Kotick's compensation structure is designed so that he can receive five annual bonuses for meeting specific criteria only once in that five-year period. It's a little bit like losing a race four years in a row at the Olympics and then winning the fifth. Instead of being awarded a gold medal for that fifth year, you get five gold medals, one for that year and the four races you lost previous. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't matter if it's sustainable or not. That's just unfair. Yeah. But it's Blizzard. Like, and it's Bobby Kotick. You, when, yeah, it's, yeah, maybe you didn't notice that you were signing the contract in blood because, <laughs> I mean, you got to understand where you're going. Like maybe, yeah. maybe they, maybe they started working there. No, I doubt it. No. It's just, I, you know? It's just how it works, man. Well, it's not how it works everywhere. But Blizzard has been known, especially... That's how it works there, though. I say Blizzard. Let's go with Activision. Mm -hmm. Activision. I don't have a lot of... uh... Yeah, I know they bought Bungie. Um, And I don't necessarily think that Bungie getting away from Activision has actually helped them or hurt them. Um, I don't necessarily know which way to go on that. I don't think they've been away long enough for that to be the case or for me to make any kind of judgment on that. If I were to judge it right now, I would say it's not that great because they don't have the financial backing from Activision. But at the same time, I'm actually kind of glad that they are out from under mm-hmm. the, 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 you know, the umbrella of Activision and on their own. I think that gives them an amazing amount of freedom to, to do a lot of things. And so I'm actually kind of glad. And obviously, you know, you look at this and it's, it's, it's good that they're out of there as well. But that's basically my association with Activision. That's it, is, is what Bungie's done. And they got out from under that. Mm-hmm. Bought themselves out so that they could leave that place. Um, but it's Activision, man. Activision has been the new EA for a long time. Mm. When EA was bad, you know, EA was bad company. Yeah. Act, you know, and then EA became not bad company, you know. I want to say good company, but they became not bad company. Mm-hmm. And Activision said, well, we'll lead the charge. And they <laughs> took up the flag, and they marched headlong into the bad company realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, after all, they were not good company when they did that, but they wanted to be better at being a bad company. And so they ran with it. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and it, I say that knowing that there are millions of people playing Call of Duty and don't care about look I don't play Call of Duty because I have a problem with Activision Mm -hmm. I don't play Call of Duty because I don't like playing Call of Duty anymore it was fun at one point Mm -hmm. yeah but for me it lost its it lost its luster Mm -hmm. I still haven't even tried Warzone yet Uh, the free to play battle royale thing or whatever I tried it I still haven't just I tried it, but it didn't hold my interest. Long Which, by the way, they all. announced they're making another. Uh, uh, Treyarch and Raven are the teams that are making the new Call of Duty. Whoopee. A new Call of Duty. I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a new year. It must be a new Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. I swear. Yeah. 
that's but, a franchise that I just same with Assassin's Creed. Like they killed that for a while, and then they brought it. I say they killed it for about a year, and then they brought it back, mm-hmm. and they did some stuff different with it. Yeah, and that's great. Um, Call of Duty is one that they haven't they haven't stopped that train. They just keep going with it, mm-hmm. and they keep going, and they keep going, and it's like I don't know what's ugh. the Lord. The, well, they keep doing it because it's still it still sells. It still it still makes money for them, doesn't it? That's why you keep doing it. Yeah. Lethal Migraine says EA is soft and take two slid into the EA spot. Um. Yeah. I, I I guess so. I haven't really been following Take Two. I do have an article here from Take Two, mm-hmm. talking about the future of games, um, or at least the business being digital. Uh, if we have time to get to that, and I think we will, I will I will touch on that. We're going to talk about the PlayStation games revealed at State of Play, and if we can get to that article, we'll talk about Take Two as well. Coming up on the other side of this break, um, one of the former hosts of the show, Daniel. Um, who works at Bungie, actually. Uh, I was going through looking for songs, looking for stuff I could do, and uh, he had apparently picked up this game. He was not playing it, but he either got an achievement on it or he bought it. It was in his little pre, you know, mm-hmm. what he's what he's been doing recently, and he bought this game, and it's another one of those, um, it's another one of those Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, things like that, just where it's like, here's a farm, here's a little, here's a little, the house and you need to maintain your land and whatever it's very chill sort of thing where you are a farmer <laughs> mm-hmm. in a very uh scaled back graphically type of thing you know mm-hmm. top down view and that sort of stuff it's a game called little wood okay. and it's the main menu music for that so we're gonna take a break when we come back more in-game chat in just a moment Welcome back to In Game Chats. Battle of Polytopia. I don't know anything about it myself. It has a bunch of tracks for it, but they're all like less than a minute long. They're very short. A civilization Um, strategy game. Yeah, apparently so. Um... So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, have some pronunciation help on Daniel's name or Daniel? Yeah, Daniel. <laughs> I was thinking of the other Daniel, the the Daniel that works for Bungie. So here's the here's the name. Very Siri esque. Conciliator. <laughs> Conciliator. Mm-hmm. Conciliator. 
That is how I'm going to pronounce your name. Conciliator. Actually, I just call you Daniel. Um, so, PlayStation uh, State of Play. Bleh. Crash Bandicoot 4. Um, it's not that it was announced, but you got to see more gameplay from it. Mm-hmm. It looks really good. It looks very, very good. It looks nice. It's very. It's done very well. There's not a lot, I don't think, that has to go into these games to make them look really good, especially something when you're moving from... Uh, you know, something on the original PlayStation to something on PlayStation 4 now. Um, you know, it's and, and it's a platformer. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you can make it really you can make it really good. And they've done that. With Crash 4, it looks really great. Is it a game that I'm going to play? No. <laughs> but it looks good. And for people who love Crash, I think it's fantastic. I am not familiar with Crash like I am familiar with a Mario or with a Sonic. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just not familiar with Crash as much as other people might be. Um, so for those that are excited about it, I think you're getting... All, I, I kind of wish I was, because what they showed looked... I was like, man, if I was a Crash fan, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. This looks really, really good. Um, especially when they went in to talk to... Or when they talked about some of the different... Like, there's some special stages that are done in a different art style than the rest okay. of the game. Yeah. And as you do those and complete them, you unlock them to play the rest of the game in that same art style. Hmm. Like, a, like a vintage mode or whatever? Like a what mode? Vintage, classic, whatever. Uh, there is one that is done like an old uh, silent Hollywood movie type thing. Okay. With the lines, the scratch lines on the film, mm-hmm. and it's also sped up a little bit mm-hmm. um, to make it look like that. And there is... One that is done in like this really wavy looking psychedelic look to it. Um, okay, it was it was interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hitman Three was shown, but actually, what they were showing was the VR aspect of Hitman Three. Okay. You can play the entire game in VR. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hitman Three. I don't know why you would want to, but you can play the entire game in VR. Um, yeah, some games I don't know why they got a VR part. I don't know. I don't know. It's just with with Hitman, I. That third person mode is like that. That helps me kind of look around, you know, to my surroundings to make sure to see what's going on. But when you're in VR, I don't think you get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe you do. I don't know. I I, I haven't played that. Uh, I mean, you'd have to have like full room VR stuff to be able to turn real quick behind you and and whatever you have to do. Uh, Pathless was shown. I didn't even watch that. Spelunky 2 was shown. I didn't watch that. Because it's like, it's more Spelunky. Bug Snacks. There was Bug Snacks. Uh, that showed off some gameplay. That's a game that has a lot of people talking about it, but I still... Didn't hook you, right? It's not, it's not doing anything for me. They say it looks like a mixture of Ape Escape and Pokemon Snap. Eh. I don't know. The uh, expansion number two for Control... Out August 27th called AWE, which I swear to God stands for Alan Wake Experience. That's all I can think How of. How did that game do anyway? I haven't thought Control? about that. Control? Yeah, I haven't thought about that game at all. I think it did time. well for them. I don't think it was a blockbuster for them, but I think it did well. They had a good, uh, there was good timing on the release. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it did okay for them. It was not a failure at all. Okay. In any, in any, I think it did better than Quantum Break, okay. which was their last game that they mm-hmm. did. Um, the Pedestrian, they showed that off, which I really want to play that game. It's on PC, but now it's going to be on uh, PlayStation. But it's going to come out in January, but I really want to play that. Um, it's, a pu- it's a puzzle game. It's a, it's, okay. a, it's a figure out how to get from point A to point B mm-hmm. um, with this stick man dude on road signs. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? Here, I'll put the trailer in the uh, thing. In the chat room, and you can see what I'm talking about. I think that's fascinatingly creative. Hmm. The way they built it um, looks great. So, and I and I think it's enough for me to like, yeah, like I could see myself playing that on the on the Switch, you know, hmm. as a portable type thing, and and play a couple of levels. Yeah. Speaking of playing on the Switch, what do we do during the break? <laughs> Played Burnout Paradise. Uh, watched uh, Scott's uh, driving driving skills on display. 
how many you didn't see you didn't see the first part when I was just I mean I you, was you t boned two people I t boned two I, I slowed down on my first one because I thought up oh, I'm gonna cause a wreck and but I still hit him pretty hard didn't trigger didn't trigger a wreck mm-hmm. and then I was like ooh okay well then zoom because then at that point I wanted to trigger a wreck so mm-hmm. then I zoomed through I kept going and mm-hmm. sure enough the very next intersection in comes a car boom t boned again I just pushed him out of the way mm-hmm. didn't trigger a wreck right. Until you were watching over my shoulder, and I hit a guardrail and hard took my car out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you you drifted right into a guardrail. I would lo- I love I played j- again the little bit that I played of it when uh, I was having some wrecks and the cars were flying. Oh, God, I love the game. I haven't been able to figure out how to initiate Showtime mode, which is the um, again. Here's another one. <laughs> There's another part where Criterion failed with with Paradise. They took mm. out Crash mode, added Showtime mode. Again, they wanted to keep everything open world, so how do they do their little crash mode? Uh, well, let's make it showtime. You activate it, and all of a sudden your car goes into a, a, a roll. Mm-hmm. And then you just, you know, as you hit cars, you build up damage, and you can keep going. Uh, as long as you keep hitting cars, it'll, mm-hmm. it'll build up your boost meter, and that's, that's what keeps moving you forward. You hit mm-hmm. the boost, your car will bounce and start rolling again. Yeah. If you do nothing, it just sits there. And uh, the timer runs out. So you just keep doing that. And so uh, it, it just it did not. It was it's it's cool to be. It's it's fun to chase the score mm-hmm. because, you know, especially back when a lot of people were playing that, um, everybody had high scores on different streets. Every street is a high score. Mm-hmm. So the length of a street, um, wherever you start on, it counts for that. Even though you may end up on a completely different street. Mm-hmm all the way across the map by the time the game's over or by the time the mode is over with. Right. It counts for that one street you started on. Yeah. So um, every street has a showtime mode, uh, uh, record to beat, Mm -hmm. a speed record to beat um, when you go from one end of the road to the other end of the road. Um, But you have to have that turned on in order for it to count. Uh, which essentially is leave it on all the time. Mm. There's no time you want that turned off. Um, because that way, if you're in a race or if you're just cruising around the city and you beat a time, boom, you did it. Good job. Yeah. It gets uploaded to their whatever. So, um, Anyway, moving on. Uh, they showed off Godfall uh, gameplay. That's another game that is not hooked to me as well. And so I haven't watched that. What I did watch... <laughs> Was, what's it called? Braid Anniversary Edition. Mm. Jonathan Blow's game from, God, it was the Xbox Arcade from years and years and years ago. Mm-hmm. And basically the game was, you had an interesting time mechanic. Where when you moved, the time of the game moved. Which yeah. is a lot like what Super Hot is. Yeah, but Super Hot, yeah. It was different back then. And so, anyway, there's, a, there's an announcement trailer for it. And when you watch that, there's some comparisons of here's what it looked like in the past. Here's what it looks like now. It looks beautiful now. Um, I really, oh. really enjoyed that game. Goodness. What? 2008, 2009? Yeah. When it came out, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ten years old. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And that was everything announced at uh, the PlayStation State of Play. So, yay. Not so not much. It's just uh, just one, huh? Really, uh, that's about it. Yeah, just one game stood out. Yeah. yeah. Control, they, the trailer for Control's expansion was, you know, interesting. But it's not that it didn't pull me in. It's just that I'm interested in playing Control. I just haven't done that yet. Yeah. Um, no I don't rush. know. I might do it when I get the new PC. I may play it on that. Um. I bought, my, I bought my motherboard this week, I think. Was yeah. it this week or last week? I don't know, but I bought my motherboard. It finally came in stock and I got it. So okay. now I'm looking at, uh, now I'm waiting for a good deal on some RAM to come in. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really all I need. I have the power supply. Mm-hmm. I'll pick up another CPU cooler because I don't think the cooler that I've got is going to, the cooler I've got, I bought way back when. And I, have, I don't think it'll, it likely would fit mm-hmm. for my AMD, but I don't think I have, the brackets or anything else for it. 
Um, Because, I mean, that was eight years ago. Which was a Cooler Master? Yeah, it was a Cooler Master, yeah. Yeah. Uh, In fact, you can't buy that that model of Cooler Master. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not sold anymore. Is it the the, uh, X-shaped bracket? I can't remember. Okay. I mean, it was it was for Intel. Yeah. So, and I'm doing AMD. Cause when I, yeah, because one I got it had that uh, it had that X shaped uh, bracket that went over the uh, process. And it was like really funny getting it in there. I got it in there, but mm-hmm. it was like real tedious getting getting my hands and but in the right in the right place to get that thing hooked up right. Yeah. 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 Lethal migraine. I know it came with a cooler, um, and it came with an RBG or RB. Yeah. Yeah. RBG cooler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, it came with, yeah, it came with an RBG cooler, and I've kind of, I've been, I've been waffling back and forth on going for an RBG build or going for a straight up, you know, just, just build a computer, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, buy the parts that are good and don't worry, and if they come with RBG, great, but if they don't, don't worry about it, yeah. you know, and so I've sort of been fluctuating back and forth on that. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, I haven't had to make the commitment of to go one way or the other but i'm getting to that point yeah because uh it's not gonna it's not really gonna extend the build if i if i do go that way it just means i gotta pick up some extra fans that have some lighting ability in them yeah um that's about it but (laughs) uh um, conciliator uh, says I remember making fun of him and he's talking about me for buying a new card for Witcher 3 and then that god awful Batman happened <laughs> you're exactly right I did buy a new card I am pretty sure I bought it for Batman but probably told everybody else I was getting it for Witcher 3 <laughs> um but understand now. I don't know if you've listened to the most recent episode, Daniel, but uh, or the, any of the previous episodes where I'm talking about build making a new build. The last build, uh, the last full complete build on a machine I did was in 2012. So I'm still running with a i7 3770K or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're about due. You know, my RAM is DDR3. Mm-hmm. Uh, something I don't even know what the speed is. Probably sixteen hundred DDR three sixteen hundred, um, and it's only it is sixteen gigs, but um, and the only two things that I have replaced on that system since that time was a power supply in twenty sixteen mm-hmm. because my other one died, and the graphics card in twenty fifteen. So I had my graphics card from 2012 to 2015, got a new one, have still have that graphics card, and will still have that graphics card up until some new stuff comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't see any point in buying a new graphics card when I, I, they're, they're on the verge of releasing new stuff. It's either going to knock down the money that it costs to buy the really good cards right now, right, or it's going to be enough where I can pick up one of the brand new cards and be set for another good you know, five years. Yeah. So... I'm holding off on that. I almost held off on the processor because I knew AMD was doing their 4000 series, uh, but nobody was real sure on when that was going to happen. And I think even boards are going to get, for the AMD, you're getting the 600, the X600 series uh, will eventually come out for that 4000 series from AMD. But this is this is down the road, and I don't know how how far down the road. Mm-hmm. I know graphics cards are hitting in September, or at least we're, we're going to know something in September. Um, but they really, everybody's speculation is, no, nope, it's this fall we're getting new graphics cards. At some point on this later half of the year, we're getting new graphics cards. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the uh, as far as the AMD stuff, the 4000 series was announced, but it's only being put in, like, pre-built systems. It's only available for pre-built systems. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't, and or for whoever does those manufacturing things. So you can't buy them for individual use right now. Um, and even that hasn't actually made it to market yet. They just announced that, hey, we're releasing our 4000 series, but when they release, they're only going to be available to um, the pre-built machine type stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Well, by the time it all comes together, maybe uh, Control will be uh, at a discount for you, if it isn't already now. Uh, yeah, it's gone It's gone up and down as far as pricing. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, eventually I'll be there. But, yeah. So now I'll get RAM. Um, I think RAM's really the only thing I actually need. Mm-hmm. I have a case. If I stick with that case. If I go with an RGB build, I'm getting a brand new case. Mm-hmm. Just because if you, I mean, if you're going to light everything up, you need a window to see it. And I do have a window in mind, but it's mm-hmm. compared to the windows they put on on cases nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a portal. It's just yeah. a it's just a small little thing. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I tell you the other reason I want to get a new case as well, and we don't have a lot of time. Uh, it's because uh, the case that I have isn't built. Again, 2012. Yeah, USB has jumped a couple of generations since then. Um, as far as speed, so the yeah. front headers that I can have, my motherboard has, you know, the, the front panel headers and everything else uh, are better than what my case can provide. Mm-hmm. Um, even the USB-C uh, stuff is, is, is available to have. So, yeah, I kind of want to bump up on the case anyway. Just do I go with something that exposes everything so I can show it off, or do I just get something that's like, okay, that stuff will fit. Good. Yeah. Uh, we got to go. Um, thanks, everybody. I, we could talk about this for hours. Thanks, for everybody, for joining us on the live stream radio. Thanks for Hey, Daniel, thanks for showing up. Everybody new that showed up. I know, Daniel, you're not new. But everybody that did, thank you so much. Uh, go to endgamechat.net. Join us on Twitter, Facebook, our YouTube channel, uh, you know, Twitch that you're watching us on. Subscribe there. It's all available to you. Have a fantastic week. We will see you next Saturday. This is music from a game called Undermine. I don't know anything about that game, but... That's what it's from, and we'll see you next Saturday.